Hello and welcome all. In this lecture, we shall create the method to add a movie to the movies table in the database and edit an existing movie and save the changes to the database, delete a particular movie. So we'll flip over to the Visual Studio. And uh, in the last lecture, we have completed these two methods, get movies and get a single movie by ID. And we have actually created async programming, async methods and awaited on these results. All right. So hope everything is clear and I would strongly encourage you to put uh, your questions in the question and answers portal on the uh, this uh, framework and then someone will address it at the earliest. Now let's complete these three methods. So first thing is that we'll do is the add movie. But before that, I will just reshuffle a little bit. So I will just bring it below the add method because, you know, normally uh, edit is very similar to the add and it goes almost hand in hand with the inserting a new movie and editing an existing movie and finally the delete movie. So first thing we'll do is to make all of them as a sync one by one. Uh, or you can just uh, put the async keyword just not to forget him and then you will get rid of this throw new not implemented exception and start coding so for adding a new movie what happens is that we have got this movie object okay so this is will then take use of this, make use of this context object, which we have seen in the last lecture. So context dot on the context object, which is of type application DB context. Okay. And, and movies is the DB set. So remember yesterday, I, I have told you that every time you create a new entity or new table in the database, you have to create a DB set for that. So it is for the movies. This is movie uh, DB set. So now you can see context.movies.add and pass in this parameter movie. Okay. And then because this is a sync. Um, After adding it to the collection, then we have to await this call, await underscore context on the context object. We'll call the save changes async method. Okay. So what this does is to save the changes to the database asynchronously. So what this does, you know, on the IntelliSense, it saves all changes made in this context to the database. Now this method, there is a lot more things, information written. You can uh, go over it like this method will automatically call Microsoft.EntityFramework code.ChangeTracking.ChangeTracker.DetectChanges to discover any changes to the entity instances before saving to the underlying database. Okay. So finally, because it is expecting a task of a movie class of movie type so we'll return this you know return movie so that will satisfy the return type that is task of movie it is basically a task on the t class t is movie basically if you return and asynchronously saved uh, movie and then it will actually wrap around the task you know because task is nothing but it represents an asynchronous operation that can result that can return a value so this is an asynchronous operation on a type which is movie now let's go for this edit movie get rid of this throw new not implemented exception and for edit movie again i'll make use this of this uh, context object context dot there is a property known as entry 
all right context dot entry and then entry of what type movie object that I have passed that is passed to this as a parameter to this edit movie so context dot entry on movie I'll come back to what is the entry so dot state in a bit entity state dot you have got this modified by default okay so this modified means the entity is being tracked by the context and exists in the database and some are all of its property values have been modified okay so what uh, this entry does it gets an microsoft dot entity framework co dot change tracking dot entity entry this is a entry of the type movie to the database so it is equivalent to entity state dot modified so what this modified this entire right hand side is doing the entity is being tracked by the content and exists in the database okay so next two lines are very similar i mean actually exactly the same as the add movie so i will just copy them from here and paste it so after tracking that the entity state is modified it changes it saves the changes asynchronously to the context in the context to the database and which is awaited and it finally returns the movie object and delete a movie this delete movie is the first line is the same as get movie by id because here you can see that the movie a particular movie which is identified by the id which is basically the same as this line here so i will just copy it over just to save some time to it will get the movie which is passed to the delete movie method as an id okay and then what happens is now i will again have to use make use of the context object so context dot movies okay dot you can see there is a remove so context dot movies dot remove you have got uh, this movie entity it can take this movie entity so you will pass this movie movie object and then after having removed you will await a call to the database with context dot again save change async save changes async and then return movie so basically these two lines are again the same as it was in the edit movie or it was in the um, add movie so these two lines are the pretty much the same here for the delete movie with the id so that's all so if you just build this control shift b hotkey combination it should all build and i'll come back to the how the delete movie works so build is succeeded what happens that you are passing the id for the delete movie method and uh, you are again expecting a task of movie and doing this method calling this method or forming this method asynchronously so again you are um, first line as i told you that this is to just asynchronously finding a movie object with the id so which is exactly what this line does and then once this finds this movie object to be deleted then it calls the remove method okay and you can see the begins tracking the given tracking in the given entity in the entity state dot deleted state such that it will be removed from the database when the db context dot save change is called so that's what i am doing here context dot save changes a sync so after having removed it from the collection it changes the state to the database and then finally returns the movie so in today's lecture we have seen that you know we have completed the other three methods for add, edit and delete movie.